We are back in Edmonton, Alberta, getting set for the Rangers in Edmonton Oilers. Oilers beat the Rangers in New York earlier this season, two to one. Close captioning, as always, is presented by the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Had a little pregame ceremony on the ice. Let's check out our Audi goaltending matchup. Cam Talbot, you see his numbers, 11-6 record this season, rookie goaltender. 1.76 goals against average, 937 save percentage. He's had a terrific rookie season. No, he sure has, Sam. I mean, remember, he's played 19 games, so this is not a one or two hit wonder. This is someone who's been consistent from day one when he had the opportunity to play. And across the way is a man who starred at Cornell University for four years. He grew up just 20 minutes away from here, but then went to Cornell, starred there, started his NHL career with Toronto, was traded to LA and acquired by the Edmonton Oilers from the LA King. Now he's been great. It was a wonderful trade. He acquired for a third round draft pick. He's coming off a 4-3 overtime win against the Anaheim Ducks in which Anaheim had a, a measly 51 shots on goal, and he made 48 saves. He was absolutely brilliant. As I mentioned, earlier in the season, had a, what, was it 57 or 59? 59, 59 against 59 the San Jose. Save, shutout yes. against the San Jose Sharks. So that's, Dallas, what, that's what he's done for them. Pardon Dallas Aikens, a one-time New York Ranger, in his first season as a head coach in the National Hockey League, and we're underway. Rangers open up with Stepan, Nash, Carcillo, McDonough, and Girardi. And Girardi moves it quickly to Stepan, and that's what the Rangers want. Quick, out of the zone. Stepan makes a nice move. Played it off the side of the net. Girardi's in deep. Back to Stepan. He's checked there by David Perron, number 57. Stepan swings it around the boards. Down comes Girardi to play it. Kept moving by Justin Schultz who was a teammate of Derek Stepan at the University of Wisconsin for a year. That's played off the goaltender by Carcillo, and the Oilers able to lift it out. Anton Lander, Swedish-born forward, second-round draft pick a couple of years ago, plays it back to David Perron. Perron checked there by Girardi. Along the boards, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, number 93. And that's fired into the corner, played by Girardi. Past, a little behind Brad Richards. Martin Marincin, Slovakian-born defenseman. He's a good-looking young player, Sam. He's he's six foot five. Weighs about 180 pounds. Yeah. Actually, he's 192 now. They're trying to get him to gain some weight <laughs> because he can't. But he played the Olympics for Slovakia, and he's a heady young player. Again, with good size and a good stick. And you know what they're doing? Dallas Aikens, now that they've been out of the playoffs for a while, they're, they're looking at all these young kids. Not yeah. just looking at them, but this kid is averaging over 18 and a half minutes a game. So they're going to try and find out of these young kids that they've had who can play. And that includes Kleffbaum on defense, who mm -hmm. scored his first NHL goal last Oscar year. Oscar Kleffbaum from Sweden, a former first-round draft pick of theirs. He's number 84. Taylor Hall, with that simple number four, drops it off. Worked back by Jordan Everly. Rangers have Zuccarello, Brassard, and Pouliot with Stoll and Strawman. A lead for Everly moves in on Stoll, plays it toward the front, but all the way through. Mark Fraser steps up. Fraser inserted into the lineup because of injuries to Andrew Ferrance on defense. Ferrance had the game-winning goal the other night against Anaheim. And he's out with an injury for the next several days. And he's been hurt. He, they said he was hurt for three weeks, but wouldn't come out of the lineup. Rangers bring on Diaz and Klein on defense. John Moore getting a lot better as practice the last few days and has had no ill effects. Dorsett with a good hit along the boards on Boyd Gordon. Klein moves it up ahead. Rangers fourth line on. Dorsett takes a hard hit from Jeff Petrie. Dominic Moore centers, and it's intercepted and fired around the board. Stopped by Kevin Klein. Klein drives it toward the net, went off the defenseman, Marincin. That went off the goaltender as Brian Boyle swept it in front. Outlet pass to Matt Hendricks, and Hendricks puts it in the Rangers' zone. Rafael Diaz after him, Luke Gosdick, number 20. This is Edmonton's fourth line on the ice. Moving in, Rick Dash. 
Double team step on feeds Carcillo. Carried it deep. It deflects toward the goaltender and Red Scrivens gloves it and holds it. Now the Rangers have had a couple of rushes where they're just barely off as far as getting a real good scoring chance, and including the one by Danny Carcillo. Elaine Vigneault, the head coach, talked about tightening up a little bit in their own zone, and, and Danny Carcillo gets an opportunity. Boy, what a chance for him. As the coach opted to go with experience of Carcillo as opposed to keeping JT Miller in the lineup. Well, JT Miller gets scoring chances, you know, but they're still concerned about, you know, he's still a kid that's trying to learn the defensive side, and so they feel that, that they can score enough they don't need his offense in, but they, they want to make sure they don't lose games from defense. You know, defensive mistakes. Right. And so, so they're erring, I think, more towards what you talk about, the experienced players and the young ones. The pass by Puckbaum was deflected in the Rangers zone. Small back ends it to Strawman up ahead to step on. Marty San Luis is on. Rangers changing lines. On comes Richards and Hagelin to join San Luis. Talbot leaves it there for Girardi. Girardi with McDonough. A long pass for San Luis goes by him. Scrivens winds around the Petrie. Pushes it ahead. The Nugent Hopkins. Now Taylor Hall. Good play by Girardi at the line. Here come the Rangers. San Luis pass deflected. Played by Marincin to Petrie. Neither team has been credited with a shot. They played about four and a half minutes. Taylor Hall lost it. Brad Richards, quick turn, three on two across. Here's San Luis. They have a good shot that's knocked away by Scrivens. Here's the first shot on goal. A steal by San Luis. Centers in front for Richards off his stick. Marty San Luis and Brad Richards. Richards around to Hagelin. Checked there by Petrie. Who shoves him down and takes the puck. Jordan Everly lifting it ahead. Blocked. Good keep in by McDonough. Mark Fraser broke his stick on the play, trying to move the puck. Rangers take it away. Richards out to McDonough. Couldn't keep it in the zone. Zuccarello just off the bench. Rangers complete a change. Zuccarello moves in. Checked there by Boyd Gordon. Scrivens has to go off his stick. Anton Belov gives it back to Pouliot. Zuccarello for Brassard. Couldn't get a shot off. Close to Kevin Klein. Down the boards. Belloff, number 77, Russian-born defenseman, drops it back for Jeff Petrie. It goes all the way down and will be an icing on the Oilers. 5.24 gone by here in the first period. Still only one shot on goal on the scoreboard. Well, they're going to have to keep that group of Edmonton Oilers on the ice. There's the shot, and that was Marty St. Louis. He did a nice job of taking the puck off his skate, and then a good play here to intercept the outlet pass and get it to Richards and so now the the Rangers with an opportunity they've put five fresh players on the ice against this group of Edmonton Oilers again as I mentioned earlier Sam and this is a group that they, they, they're not sure how to play defense yet I mean it's a, it's a struggle they're young they're young they've had some injuries and they can go when they've got the puck but this is where you want to keep the play Walk around the board Girardi keeps it in Petrie moves it up the board stopped by Stepan Stephon plays it to Nash, trying to get it through to Carcillo, but it was tipped out of the zone. Talbot stops it for Dan Girardi. This is the second game of a four-game road trip for the Rangers. Rangers are tied for the second most road wins in the NHL. St. Louis leads with 24. Good shot by McDonough. Nash with a shot, and Scriven's got a piece of that. Rangers and Anaheim have 23 road wins. Step on, leaves it there. Carcillo for Nash. Nash battling in front. Meanwhile, the Oilers get out with the puck. Philip Larson, normally a defenseman from Denmark, sends it in. He's playing up front as an extra forward with the injuries that the Oilers have had. And they're offside on the play. 6-18 gone by. First period, Rangers and Edmonton Oilers, no score. John Giannone back in Edmonton where this glass thankfully protects me from what Cam Talbot will see all night and it protected me from a couple of hits earlier on in the first period. Matt Hendricks was in hard on the puck and he really ran into both Diaz and Stahl on his first two shifts of the game. So Edmonton being a little bit physical here. Speaking of physical, we have Dan Carcillo as our first intermission guest. You can send your questions to him on Twitter. Use the hashtag NYR and send your thoughts to Ron Duguay. He is in our studio. He will take you through the intermissions. Guys? Thanks, John. 
We'll look forward to that between periods. Right now, Rangers bring on Dominic Moore with Derek Dorsett and Brian Boyle. And Tom Stallman with a puck. Now Mark Stahl. Before the game, it's going to be an icing. Head coach Elaine Gino very complimentary about his fourth line, especially the play of Dominic Moore. Well, Derek Dorsett, back a few years ago, got into a fight with Taylor Hall. The only, it was the only major that Taylor Hall ever got in, and, and Gazdick, who's a big, tough winger, right from the faceoff, he was trying to get Dorsett to go, and then once it dropped, ah. and then and keep following it here, and then here's another one right there, and that's the penalty. Good discipline. So, real good by Dorsett, plus Gazdick is, Gazdick, pardon me, 228 pounds, so just get away. <laughs> no need to do something that's crazy. Gazdick for interference at 6.30. Rangers on the power play. This power play presented by Volkswagen. And the Rangers, only one power play goal scored over the last eight games. Two in the last 11. Bad numbers at one for 22, two for 31. They spent a lot of time at practice yesterday on the power play. Nash breaks through and a save by Scrivens. Oh, great move by Rick Nash. Fabulous save by Ben Scrivens. Send away Nash and step on up front. Richards and McDonough at the points. Nash, pass was blocked. That was a pass intended for McDonough, who started to cut in from the left point. Now, it was McDonough that made the pass to Nash, and then Nash did some marvelous things to get through. And I thought he had Scrivens going to Scrivens' left, and somehow he was able to kick out the right pad and make the save. Beautiful save. He needed to lift it up just a little bit. Right. Zuccarello, Brassard, and Pouliot on now with Girardi and Richards. Fired up the boards, blocked by Zuccarello. Out to Girardi for the shot blocked in front by Fraser. And cleared all the way down. Edmonton's penalty killing can be good, real good, or real bad. They were real good against Anaheim, four for four, real bad against San Jose, 0 for three. When the Sharks scored three power play goals. Here's Pouliot. Pass gets through. Rafael Diaz on now with Girardi at the points. Pouliot to Girardi. Across to Broussard. Derek Broussard with a drive. Saved by Scrivens. Justin Schultz fires it out. 15 seconds to go on the power play. Talbot leaves it for Zuccarello. Edmonton does not have a shot on goal yet. The Rangers have been credited with four shots. I think it should be a little higher than that. They've had at least a couple here. Clearing attempt block. Stall with a shot off the glove. Um, Ben Scrivens, power play is over. Teams are back at full strength. Offside whistle. Rangers had a couple of good looks on that power play. Well, in particular early, Sam, when McDonough made the pass. There's McDonough. One quick pass to step on, then to Nash, and then that move. You see, he had Scrivens going to his mm. left, and Scrivens had to put on the brakes. Watch him put on the brakes with the left leg. Oh, better get back. Oh, what a save. You're right, though, because just lifted right there. It's in the net. Yeah. More Dorset and Boyle back on. Here I am giving advice to a guy that scored 20 <laughs> goals a season for how many years now? 12 or, yeah. or something like that. It just keeps on going. You're right. I can really help you, Rick. Well, the game's easy amazing. from up here, Joe. You know that. <laughs> just lift it. That's all. <laughs> Dorset goes back to play it. Pressured there by Puff Bomb. In fact, that was you that told him to lift it, not me. I was just agreeing with you. Strawman leading the rush. Dominic Moore back to Strawman who tipped it wide. Nice rush up the ice. Moore. Boyle gets it back to Stahl for a shot off the back of the net. And back. Right, Dorsett to Moore. Kevin Klein just on. Takes the pass. Gets it through. Stahl turns. Saves Scrivens and the rebound into the corner. This fourth line doing a good job. Once again, they've been the most consistent line for the Rangers the last number of games. Sam Gagne, number 89, with a shot. The rebound goes wide by Eberle. There was a lot of net, but he missed it. Gagne getting the shot on goal. Is Edmonton now with two shots on goal? Officially. Wow, we what a chance that was. Eberle doesn't yeah. normally miss open nets like that. 
Houston Hopkins against San Luis. No score in the game, just past the midway point, first period. Mark Fraser fires high off the glass. McDonough goes for it. We'll push it ahead to Haglin, who clears it out. Fraser sends it back in. And McDonough ran in the referee, Eric Furlat. Rangers have it. Richards moves in with San Luis. That's a pass blocked by Fraser. And played by Anton Lander. Lander moves it across. Fraser spinning away from Brad Richards. McDonough, who almost had Richards for a breakaway, pass a little behind him. Fraser, long pass, tipped the head by Boyd Gordon. Gordon and Klein go for it. Diaz moves it up ahead. Julian for Zuccarello. And Zuccarello hasn't scored a goal since January 26th. Yeah, I just I think he's been playing hurt. Remember he broke his hand yeah. over in at the Olympics in Sochi. I just don't think he's 100 percent recovered from that. Klein leads Zuccarello. Try to get it back to Kevin Klein. That was stopped by Justin Schultz. Here's Sam Gagne moving in. David Perron tried to get it through to Taylor Hall and was blocked. Hall tries to get out in front. Zuccarello got a piece of it. Stahl able to carry out. Well, what a play by Stahl defensively. The Rangers have given up a couple odd man rushes. Give away to Stepan. He missed the net. Scrivens gave the puck away. And Stepan had an open net, but he missed. Back comes Carcillo with Stepan. Stepan goes deep for Carcillo. Went through. Carcillo tries to get it to Nash. Nash winds up. Big drive. Goes wide. Around the boards and out. Just under eight minutes to go in a fast-paced first period. These two teams like a fast game. I mean, the Rangers, you know, they, they like playing a fast game. But yeah. against Edmonton, you better make sure that you don't give up the odd man rushes. Fraser toward the net. That deflected off the glass. Everly. And Tom Lander gets it to Nugent Hopkins. Here's Everly. Stepping out. Taken away by Nash. Gets nice. it out of the zone. Nice play. Real good play by Rick Nash. Coming back. Cheating back down low to make sure that he had Nugent Hopkins covered. That pass tipped. It gets out to center. Hendricks sending it in. Talbot gloves it and holds it. 7.14 to go in the first period. Derek Stepan had a chance. He missed. No score. Scoring chances at both ends. We always hear coaches say, just take the shot. Even if it's from a bad angle, you'll see why. As Edmonton is able to get the puck to the boards. This is Gagne. Bad angle, right? Oh, but look at the rebound. And then there's Everly. All that net. And Everly just misses on the short side. Meanwhile, down the other end, Mark Stahl just made a very good defensive play. Now forces Scrivens into turning the puck over and just over the net was the shot by Derek Stepan. Right now, the shot totals on the boards. Five for the Rangers, two during their power play, and two for the Edmonton Oilers. Give away to Strawman for a drive that deflects just wide of the post. He's tipped up high. Out of the zone, Stahl trying to recover. Oilers take over. Taylor Hall's got it. Gives it up to Stahl. Everly trying to get it back. Did to Nugent Hopkins. His pass blocked by Richards and gloved by Talbot. 6.41 to go here in the first. Experience MSG game flow during every Rangers game. Follow along on MSG.com with live play-by-play -play and up-to-the-minute stats. You'll also have access to in-depth player cards, live tweets from the MSG on Air team, and extensive pre- and post-game video and analysis, all on MSG Game Flow. Face-off win by Dominic Moore. Dorset puts it the Oilers zone. Fraser back for it. Moore after him. Fraser able to get it to Sam Gagne. Dorset on him right away. Boyle is there. Moore works it loose to McDonough. Back to Dominic Moore. Toward the net. Deflected across. And brought out. By Anton Lander. Lander puts it to the Rangers zone. And Girardi able to play it. McDonough holding. 
Beginning in the last week of January, the Edmonton Oilers got their game together. They went. They've been. They 10, did. They went 10-4 and one. Now the players, talking to some of their players this morning, they were, they were just saying, you know, we start doing things right, concentrating a little bit more defensively, and then they had a game where they lost to Buffalo at home, and then all things went south for a while. Hall with a pass that was tipped. Rangers head the other way. Broussard. And then they lost to Calgary, oh. their heated rival from the southern part of the province. Eight to one right here on, the, on this ice. On a Saturday night, it was, wow. Ugly. And, and then they bounced back with a couple of strong efforts. Hey, hey. Now they're, you know, they've got some injuries. A little beat up. You mentioned Andrew Ferentz out of line. It's a key player, their captain on defense. Shot from the point by Petrie deflects into the corner. Rangers have had good coverage in the defensive zone. Nash stopped by Everly. Keeps it in for Edmonton. Ryan Smith out to Marincin and across to Petrie. Now Jordan, rather Nugent Hopkins shot deflected up in the netting and play stops. 4.46 to go in the first period. No score. That line right there was just put together for this game. Dan Carcillo, who was a healthy scratch last game, gets put up on the top line on the left side. They've been, they've been pretty good. They've been generating some chances. This is Nash, who's had the puck quite a bit. That little pass just missed, goes off the skate. And then later on, Nash, that one, Scrivens with the save. How about this on the power play? Nash gets through. Oh, great move, and Scrivens with another wonderful save. That one with the right pad, so that line has been effective here in the first period, but they need to finish off one of those plays. Marcillo had been scratched three straight games and four of the last five. Getting the chance tonight. Everly had it knocked away. Good oh. play by St. Louis. Real good play. St. Louis took one swipe at it from behind and missed. Stayed with it. Took another swipe and that time prevented Everly from getting a shot. Girardi's pass off the stick of Haglin. Gloved by Scribbins. And he holds it with 429 to go here in the first period. Tuesday night on MSG, it's the Rangers and the Vancouver Canucks. Boy, does that have some storylines. Live coverage gets underway with Visa Rangers game night at 9.30. Rangers and Canucks, 10 p.m. Tuesday night on MSG. We'll see John Tortorella, head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, a return for Elaine Vigneault to the city where he coached seven years. He had some great years. Yes, Boy, he he, we won game away from winning a Stanley Cup in Vancouver. And that's how close they came. Beaten by the Boston Bruins in game seven. San Luis sends it across for Haglund. Fraser reverses. Brought out by Perron. And sent in by Nugent Hopkins. Back for Girardi. Perron on him. San Luis. Good effort by Broussard to take the puck away. He shoots and it's blocked by Fraser. Juliot got tangled up with Scrivens in the crease. Now, and there was a, he got tangled up just prior to that with uh, Belov, the Oiler defenseman. There's Pouliot back in, nice move. Pouliot turning. Strowman with a shot, he scores! Pouliot with a great play, got it to Strowman. Rangers score. And with three and a half minutes to go in the first, it's one nothing Rangers. Now, the one thing that's been obvious in this first period is the Rangers defense have been open. And Pouliot does a nice job with the puck. A really good play by Pouliot. He makes this play. There's the steal in the neutral zone. Now here he comes. Nice move there. Turn back the other way. Buy a little bit of time. And then that one looked like it was deflected on the way, on the way in. Is it a Zuccarello goal? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Zuccarello got it. Wow. Well, the shot came in and Zuccarello gets it. Again, the stick has to be below the crossbar. It was, even though they're double checking with all the main men in Toronto to make to make sure, but that one looked to me like. Yes, I it believe is again. the stick was down, yeah, Joe. I the do puck too. went up. Here it is again. Look at his stick. Yeah, to me, that was well below the crossbar and the, and the puck went up and still hit the crossbar and went in. So I think, doesn't physics tell you if you sticks at a certain level, the puck hits it and goes up, and then hits the crossbar and goes in, right? It is a good goal. 
Verified by the people in Toronto and your physics lesson. Thank that's, you, Joe. That's, remember Ron Caron used to talk about <laughs> physics all the time in his illustrious career. You see the number. First goal in the last 18 games for Matt Zuccarello. Last time he scored a goal was January 26th outdoors. We thought we might have to break the roof in Madison Square Garden to get him going. But no. Now he's done a lot of other things well. Again, yeah. I think that, that Han continues to, you know, he just he wants to play. He doesn't, uh, he knows it's not 100%. So you can just hope that over time that it continues to heal. And uh, because he's he still finds ways to get points because of his passing, but shooting the puck has been difficult. Pouliot made a terrific play, I thought, oh, on the goal. For shot. sure, for sure he did. Strollman and Pouliot get the assist at 16-30. Rangers have the lead. Zuccarello getting his 17th of the season. Again, the Rangers, they, they force the turnover. Strollman pinches up, puck comes out, and then here comes Pouliot. Reaches. So the missed pass, that little move around Perron, and now he buys a little time with the spin, and then the, the shot, and there was Zuccarello. So the Rangers' defense in particular, they've, they've been open in this game because the Edmonton Oilers are trying to send all five players back around the front of the net, so the point men are open. Rangers score first. They've had an outstanding record this season with getting the first goal. Step on for Nash. Missed by Carcillo, and the Oilers keep in. Stepan has it back. Good time to be a Badger these days, Joe. The Badgers in the final four in the NCAA tournament. Well, they're a basketball power, Sam. That's what they are. <laughs> Taylor Hall had it knocked away by Mark Stahl. Richard Hopkins for Everly. Stahl on him. Good job by Stahl to knock it away. Loose puck picked up by St. Louis with Richards knocked away nice poke check at the line by Marincin for Edmonton that's the stick I was talking about he's got he's got that you know, again he's six foot five but that was a three on two an odd man rush for the Rangers and Marincin stayed up and used his stick to poke the puck off the stick of Richards there's Marincin with St. Louis trying to take it away he ties him up good job by St. Louis Aglin got it around to Richards here's McDonough Richards comes off the boards, across for Haglin, shot deflected away. That all started with a good job by Marty San Luis, tying up the defense to Marincin. Rangers keep it in, here's Richards. San Luis, save, made by Scrivens. And the puck's still loose, no whistle. Shot by Richards went wide, now a pile up in the crease, and the whistle blows. Why did he blow the whistle there? And the, the, the puck was behind the net. Unless he thought that there was some chance for injury or something. But the play was still alive. Yeah. It was well alive. Now the shot was taken by St. Louis. And St. Louis was the only one at one point that knew where the puck was. Here's the turnover of the good work. St. Louis, a little give and go here. Here it is. Now the shot goes through Scrivens. And then there's St. Louis. Oh, he just can't get oh. his stick to the loose puck. He can't get his stick there. Now the play's still going. And there you see the referee behind the net. Blows the whistle. The puck goes right past him. Here it is again, St. Louis just misses the shot. Here comes the puck. That one goes behind the net. Yeah, maybe he lost sight of it, Joe. Yeah, and the puck almost hit him. So the whistle stopped playing. Referee Justin St. Pierre on the call. Rangers with a 1-0 lead. Diaz has the puck and the shot wide. I like St. Louis with Richards and Haglin thus far tonight, Joe, that that line creating some things. Zuccarello took him. Taken down by Beloff, but no call on the play. Beloff had the stick between the legs of St. Louis. Hendricks tried to dump it in, it was blocked by Diaz. Zuccarello tied up, they will push it ahead. Fraser plays it across to Beloff. Under a minute to go in the first period. Rangers with a 1 0 lead. Rangers have gotten better, I think, Sam, as this, as this period has progressed. Well, they haven't given up much, that's for sure. No, no, defensively, and of course, the, the coach had a little something to say after that last game about that. Moore takes it deep to the net. It was knocked away. Dorsett. Here's a shot by McDonough. He missed the shot. Dorsett fires. It's blocked. But um, is able to move it to Schultz. Hall has the puck. Boyle ties him up. Good forecheck work. Again by this fourth line. 
Of Moore, who shoots and is blocked. Cut by Dorsett, a save, and it's put in, but waved off. Dominic Moore got to a rebound, and I don't know if they're saying that Boyle interfered with a goaltender. I don't get this one. <laughs> I think the I, ruling was contact with a goaltender goal, by Brian I think, Boyle. Uh, I think the goaltender went down. Made, he's already down on the ice. He made the save. I believe that was the call, yes, Joe. I believe you're right, Sam. So he got pushed in, with the, but the goaltender was already down to make the save, and Boyle fell on top of him. I don't think he was in a position to make another save anyway. You know what I mean? Mm. And he got Ooh. pushed on top of him. There's no penalty on the no. play, but they wave off what would have been a Rangers goal. I don't get it. 17 and a half seconds remaining in the first period. Ryan Smith reverses. Fraser goes for it. Nash pressures him. Out to center where Girardi has it back. Final seconds of the period. Good first period for the Rangers. Held the Oilers to just three shots on goal. Skated well. Scored one. Probably could have had two or three. Yeah, I, I thought the, the Rangers, their concentration on defense and not giving these Oilers, some of these really speedy and crafty oily Oiler uh, forwards, uh, much time to make plays. Edmonton had a couple chances, not many though. And then the Rangers, I thought as the period uh, continued to progress, their forecheck got better. Their pressure in the offensive zone uh, got better and they forced Scribbins to uh, really make some key saves. Coming up, it's the Delta Intermission Report. John Ginone rejoins us, his special guest outside the Rangers locker room, Dan Carcillo. Bill Pito is back in the studio in New York. He's got the Audi MSG 150 and then Ron Duguay in the Visa MSG studios with highlights and analysis of that first period. It's all coming up on the Delta Intermission Report. In Edmonton Oil Country, Rangers had some good chances, and they finally broke through on the goal by Matt Zuccarello. We are back in Edmonton, where there are Ranger fans around the building, and Wayne Gretzky fans as well. New York Rangers hockey is presented by Chase. Sam Rosen, Joe Bicoletti, John Giannone with you. And Joe, it's one nothing. Rangers could have had a couple of more. Well, I thought they did a good job of getting to the net, getting shots there, going after loose pucks. This is one that I, I, I'm still not sure why it was it was blown down at this point. You see the puck, even the referee sees the puck and he gets out of the way. But he blew the whistle, there were players in the crease, maybe just thought for the sake of safety, I'm not sure, but I thought the play should have gone on. But the fact is the Rangers, they're trying to get to the net, they're trying to get loose pucks. This is one that was not called. You see Scrivens was already down on the ice, and then Boyle gets pushed on top of him. There it is again, Boyle gets pushed down, and then there's Dominic Moore comes in to put the puck in the net, but again, the Justin St. Pierre felt that the goaltender didn't have a chance to make that second save, so he waved it off, and here we go for period number two. Step on Nash and Carcillo with McDonough and Girardi for the Rangers. Sam Gagne and Tom Lander and David Perron for Edmonton. Knocked down with a high stick by Ben Scrivens and whistled down for faceoff deep in the Edmonton zone. That's the one thing that Edmonton did well in the first period. They won 10 of 16 faceoffs in period number one, 63% of the draw. Edmonton minus 32 goal differential in the second period this season. They've scored 52, they've given up 84. Now you can even tell in that first period, they have trouble in their zone. And of course, it's the long change in the second period. So they get pinned in and, and that gives them issues. Lander went down. Rangers have McDonough and Girardi on defense. This is Lander toward the net. Glove side of the net by Cam Talbot, and he holds it. 32 seconds into the second period. For official New York Rangers autograph and game use memorabilia, visit msg.steinersports.com slash ny-rangers. Good stuff there. Cam Talbot. Not been busy at all thus far in the game. That's played toward the net by Petrie. 
Talbot got a stick on it. Stall poked it away from Taylor Hall. Richards battling Nugent Hopkins. Stallman. Off the glass. Nugent Hopkins took it away from Hagelin. That touch pass for Everly broken up by Hagelin. Rangers break out. Richards. Hagelin down the middle. A pass for St. Louis was broken up by Taylor Hall. And here's Hall with good speed. And a nice job by Strawman to catch up. Well, he knew that he was in trouble, Strawman, and he just turned from going backwards to forwards and went right to a certain spot and met, met Hall and made a good defensive play. Lead to Tyler Pitlick, who's playing injured in this game, and he was hurt the other night and was questionable to play in this game. Uh, he didn't even practice. He went out on his own this morning before the team practiced and then did not participate in the skate with the rest of his teammates. Pouliot under pressure. Edmonton's done a good job on the forecheck early in the second period against the Rangers. Rangers having trouble getting the puck out of the zone and down the ice. Boyd Gordon sends it into the Rangers zone. Matt Hendricks gets to it. Stallman checks him and Zuccarello takes the puck. Off the glass and out. Fraser knocked it down. And Tom Belloff with a pass tipped into the Rangers zone. Talbot out to stop it. He handles the puck well. Zuccarello lifts it out. Rangers take it away, but they're offside on the play. 2-12 gone by here in the second period. Now Taylor Hall is their leading scorer and has tremendous speed. And that's when Strawman realizes, oh boy, if I keep going backwards, he's going to fly right around me. So he made that decision to turn, try to catch up and get to a certain spot so that as soon as Hall tried to cut in, he was there with the stick and made a real good defensive play. Taylor Hall is an excellent young player. One of their uh, young, hopeful future stars, Neil Yakupov, is out missing his fifth consecutive game. He's hit with a shot in the ankle. The ankle is blown up again. He thought he was getting better. Dorsett centers, hit Scrivens with it. Scrivens again was caught out of the yeah. net. He had to hurry back in. Penalty coming up against Edmonton yeah, for high, high stick, stick Dominic Moore. Ryan Smith got his stick up on Dominic Moore, and he goes after Dominic Moore. Uh, Smith is probably saying that, he's probably saying I didn't even touch you. That's the kind of reaction it looked like out of Ryan Smith. Dominic Moore heads for the bench, and Ryan Smith goes to the penalty box. The Rangers get their second power play of the game. Here it is again. Let's see. There's Moore, 28. Like the stick caught him in the either in the helmet or underneath. Ryan Smith didn't think so, but I think if he sees, sees that replay, he'll realize it was a minor penalty. Rick Dash with the puck. Rangers power play is presented by Volkswagen. Marty San Louis. Now McDonough to Richards. Steps up and shoots to flex wide. San Louis step on and Nash up front. Richards and McDonough play the points. McDonough to Richards. To McDonough for the shot. Save Scrivens. Rebound. Save Scrivens as he moved across and got the shot by Marty St. Louis with his left arm. Marty St. Louis has got to be figuring what is going on here. <laughs> there is some there is something oh, happening in the air, and it's not good. I mean, this was as soon as I saw him, the puck getting to him, Sam, I said, there's his goal. There it is. And here's why. Watch it come over to him. There it is, right? Nope. Scrivens gets over and makes an excellent save. Oh man. Up high, and then it just goes off. Did he get hit his helmet? Maybe, maybe the right helmet. The yeah, I mask. thought originally it got the arm, but that got the mask. St. Louis. Take away by Lander. The good knockdown and keep in by Brad Richards, and it's taken back by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. It's in against McDonough. Good job by Nugent Hopkins, and the Rangers take it back. A little over a minute to go in the power play for early second period. Rangers a 1-0 lead. Pass through to Nash. Nice move. Nash, another one. And then he's knocked down by Fraser. Good play by Fraser. McDonough. St. Louis to McDonough. Stopped it with the skates. Moves it to Brad Richards. Down low, Nash. Fired it hard behind St. Louis. St. Louis again. Nash sets up in front. Here's Richards moving toward the net. Shot deflected out of play by Justin Schultz. Now Richards is trying so hard to get Marty St. Louis a goal. 
that he gets it over there and he's just looking. He's trying to find him. He moves his eyes. He tries to tries to fake with his eyes so that maybe that opens up a lane for Marty St. Louis. And Marty St. Louis was just pointing to his face mask because he was just asked by Henrik Lundqvist, how did he make the save? And St. Louis yeah. said right there in the head. Yeah. Hit him in the face mask. 4.03 gone by in the second period. 37 seconds to go on the power play. Broussard, Pouliot, and Zuccarello on with Diaz and Girardi. Rangers control. Girardi shoots, saves. Grivens with a glove. You get goaltending like that. You know, that's what makes these games difficult. And the Rangers attempted 27 shots in the first period to just seven for Edmonton. And it was only one nothing. Now right off the faceoff, Rangers win it. Two quick passes, the shot, and then Ben Scrivens. He has really been solid. Mm. Not just here, but all season. He yeah. was really good in L.A. too when they had some injuries there. Broussard. And they did. He would have been an unrestricted free agent. They did sign him to a That's year, right. two-year extension. Yeah, Petrie with it off the face-off win by Boyd Gordon. The puck cleared all the way down. Talbot. Leaves it for Girardi. Now Rafael Diaz back to Girardi. Up the middle of Zuccarello. Moves in. Looks to make a play. Across to Diaz. Broussard. That deflected in. That was a pass cross ice that went in off an Edmonton Oiler. And the Rangers lead it two to nothing. That pass was attempted. At least it was heading towards Zuccarello, who was coming in down the left-hand side, and hit their defenseman, and that fooled Scrivens. Here's the play again. Broussard will get it at this angle. As it comes over, here's the, you'll see the deflection right there. And Zuccarello was coming down the other side, and the Rangers, with all these shot attempts, Finally get a little bit of a break here on that one as that deflects right off Martin, Martin uh, Marincin and in. I believe that'll be Broussard's goal. Yes. It's a power play goal. Oh, sorry. That's, no, that's okay. <laughs> I had to be sure, Joe. <laughs> we'll go ahead one more time. <laughs> Rafael Diaz gets one assist. And Matt Zuccarello gets the other. Reload, go for it. Derek Broussard, it's a power play goal. There you go. And, and there's a deflection by Dominic Moore and a save by Scrivens. So the Rangers add to the lead. It's two to nothing, 438 is the time of the goal. And the Rangers and Broussard smiling. Who knows how you get goals well, in this league, Joe? You know what, he's trying to set up Zuccarello for the goal, and they get that fortuitous deflection. And for Scrivens, the way he's, the way he's been playing, you almost need to. And so both goals by the Rangers, both deflections. Right. That he didn't have much a chance, much of a chance on either one. Rangers with a two nothing lead. Stallman ahead for Hagland to Richards. Now you get the now you get the next one, and you take all the spirit out of their team. That's a good point. Hagland moving with the puck. Richards plays it deep. San Luis battling in front was tied up with Scrivens. Belov chips it off the glass. McDonough trying to keep it in. He's got it. Gets it to Haglund. Haglund to the net off the side of the post. Richards hustles to it. Lander able to work it out. And Nugent Hopkins ahead to Everly. Everly pass across went by Lander. Lander's got it back. Good hit along the boards by Marty St. Louis. Here's Jordan Everly, moves out, fires it across, and it comes out of the zone. Jeff Petrie back to get it. A little over six minutes gone by, second period, Rangers leading 2-0. Petrie with a drive, save, good save, on a hard shot by Jeff Petrie. That went off the end boards. Strollman fires around, out of the zone, step on. And it knocked away by Petrie. Rinchin gets it out. Now the Pitlick was hit. Nash tried to clear it out. Pitlick, number 68, works it ahead. And it's cleared out by Strollman. That was deflected by Stefan, brought in by Carcillo to Nash. 
shot by Stepan, a save by Scrivens. Scrivens dives out, trying to stop play, but missed it. Then up the boards, and recovered by Diaz. And the whistle stops play. Did the puck deflect off the Rangers bench? It did. That's what the linesman ruled. 6.50 gone by, second period. Derek Brassard gets a power play goal on a deflection off the Oilers. Well, the Rangers will actually be shorthanded. They were called for too many men on the ice. There are a lot of players. We've got four over here, and this man is just trying to get off in one and another one, so that's six. And so the linesman just felt that right on top of it, when Diaz touched the puck, that the Ranger player hadn't was still on the ice, and Elaine Vino did not like that call mm. at all. Boy, that was close. I mean, that's he's right there, half half on the ice, half out. Discretionary call by the linesman, so the Rangers shorthanded for the first time in this game. Lonnie Cameron, the linesman who made the call. Power play Edmonton. They've had scored four power play goals in their last six games. Rangers penalty killing. Tied for sixth in the NHL. They've given up power play goals in two of the last three games. But overall, they are 32 for 35 penalty killing over the last 14 games. Edmonton's power play at home is great. Ron moves it ahead. Taylor Hall in deep to Ryan Smith. Back to Hall. That pass across. Played by Perron. Out to Sam Gagne. Now Justin Schultz. Hall. Blocked. And McDonough goes down. He felt the effects of that. Shot by Gagne. Saved by Talbot. Haglund tried to clear it. Blocked in. Kept in by Justin Schultz. Here's Gagne. Faking. That was a pass for Ryan Smith at the side of the net. And the Rangers able to clear. Haglin and Boyle go off along with McDonough who's hurting. Girardi still on. And Hall got hit with a high stick. And I'll tell you what happened. Girardi was hurting, so he went down to try and block a second shot. He got up off balance because he was hurting. His stick was in the air. Hall was skating past the net and got the McDonough's stick. stick. Oh, boy. And then Hall was screaming at the referee for not calling that. McDonough on the bench. Hall on the bench, both hurting. Hall holding his jaw, McDonough's leg feeling the effects of the block shot. You see McDonough, here's the first block shot. Ooh, that hurts. Now he's just gonna try and scramble up. And as play went on, he, the Rangers were able to finally clear it and allow McDonough to get to the bench. Good job by Dominic Moore, got to the puck to clear. Dominic Moore on with Marty St. Louis, Stahl and Strawman. Carrying the park to the puck to Larson. Dropped it back to Everly. Eugene Hopkins trying to get it to Lander. Rangers take it away, and Dominic Moore clears again. 18 seconds to go in the Edmonton power play. Eight and a half minutes, 8.40 gone by here in the second period. Rangers a 2-0 lead. Everly moves in. Save Talbot. Rebound cleared away by Stahl. Stahl's pass taken away. Out of the corner, the pass by Lander blocked out of the penalty box, Carcillo, and the pass off his stick. Hooked away by Scrivens. Teams at full strength. Agent Hopkins pass knocked down by Stepa. That deflects to Nash. Went off him, tried to break it in. He did. Rick Nash scores. And the Rangers lead three to nothing. That started coming right out of the penalty well, box. Well, it was a good defensive play by Mark Stahl blocking the pass in his own zone. Then the Rangers got control. Carcillo at that time was coming out of the penalty box. And once they got it in the zone, they, they went to work. The one thing about Scrivens is he does not handle the puck well. Now uh, you'll see, well, here comes Stahl coming up right you know, make a defensive play. Well, pardon me, it wasn't Stahl, but it was Strawman. And then coming out of the box was Carcillo, and eventually, what an alert play by Nash. Scrivens was over there, but there was a little room above the pad, and that's where he put the puck up against the leg, and that makes it 3 nothing. Huge goal for the Rangers. Coming down toward the midway point of the second period. Hustling to the puck is Boyd Gordon's save. A beauty by Talbot. Gordon with a big chance. Fraser shot blocked by Klein, but it came out of the zone. It's offside. Edmonton, 9.25 gone by. Nash gets the goal, his 24th from Stepan.
Spalman should get an assist on that too, I believe. Well, I, I'm not or, sure no. because once it got down there, it was, if there was a All turnover, right, right. Edmonton had yeah. a chance to clear it. The Rangers stole it. So that's probably the right uh, the right call. Nash from Stepan at 9.07. Rick Nash, fourth goal in the last seven games. And the Rangers have a big 3-0 lead. Or Nash has been visible in this game, hasn't yeah. he? He's had the puck an awful lot. He's been skating, taking advantage of this Edmonton team that struggles in their own zone. And that's a huge goal coming off. As I mentioned, this Edmonton power play at home is really good. They're not very good on the road, but they're really good at home. And so the Rangers do the job on the penalty kill after taking uh, too many men on the ice penalty. And then Nash gets them that all-important third goal. And we showed that graphic. I don't know what it is about second periods for Edmonton, but it's awful for them. And now minus 34. St. Louis working against Boyd Gordon. All the way up to Girardi. McDonough, who's okay. A wrist toward the net, went off St. Louis. And Fraser, rather, Marincin was able to move it. Cleared out by Tyler Pitlick. McDonough's back. Pitlick shot to flex in the corner. But hit by St. Louis on Hendricks. Girardi to St. Louis. Girardi to St. Louis was hit. Shot by Richards off the glove of oh Scrivens. Didn't know where it was. I think it hit him in the back. And he turned and nearly put it into That's his right. own net. Back behind the net. Taken away by Richards. Help from Pouliot. Pouliot checked there by Philip Larson. Pass in front stopped there by Petrie. Diaz to Zuccarello. Saves Scrivens and he holds it. 9.21 to go. Second period. Rangers have put two on the board in the second. They lead it. 3-0. Rick Dan's got number three. Here's the upcoming schedule brought to you by Lexus. The official luxury vehicle of the New York Rangers. Tuesday night on MSG, 10 p.m. Rangers in Vancouver Canucks. Thursday night in Denver at the Colorado Avalanche, 9 p.m. on MSG. Then back home Saturday night, 7 p.m. on MSG against the Ottawa Senators. All the games preceded one half hour by Visa Rangers game night. Rangers here with a 3-0 lead. Zuccarello, Apuliat, Broussard picks it up. Zuccarello, Broussard, and Nash, the Rangers goal scorers. David Perron, pass across to Sam Gagne. Strollman tries to move it, stopped by Perron, Strollman takes it back. Justin Schultz across to Mark Fraser. 8.40 to go, second period. That's an icing on the Edmonton Oilers. New York Rangers hockey is brought to you in part by Lenox Hill Hospital, the official hospital of the New York Rangers. Now the line changes seem to have fit pretty well for so. this game. Well, and Marty St. Louis getting some chances, yeah. and that's what, they, that's what they wanted. That line with Rossard back with his old running mates. Pouliot on one side, Zuccarello on the other has been, it's like they hadn't been apart. The way they're moving the puck and creating some chances. Girardi with a lead for Carcillo, it's by him, and on goal Scrivens covers up. And Carcillo and Frazier now. Carcillo thought it was a cheap shot. Frazier, who's a big, strong, tough guy, was in Toronto for most of the season. And he stepped up on Carcillo. Carcillo had to look away as the puck, the pass goes behind him. And when he looked up and the puck was already by him, there was Frazier with the hit. He thought it was late, might have been a little bit. But Frazier's job is to play tough. That's not just do that, but that's a part of his repertoire. And that's one reason why Edmonton picked him up. Haglund against Frazier. Taylor Hall takes it away. Good play by Marty St. Louis. Haglund to St. Louis. Quick look around. Up the boards to McDonough. Back around the other way to Haglund. Now St. Louis. Here's Haglund. To Richards. Richards stops it again. Now it's Marty St. Louis again. Fell off. Richards to Haglund. And Hopkins playing it ahead to Hall. 
And Everly gets it across to Belloff. The big defenseman with a long shot. Saved by Talbot. He holds it. 7.39 to go. Second period. Boy, for Cam Talbot, it's been an easy night. He really hasn't had to make a difficult save yet. The best chance that Edmonton has had in this game was the missed shot by Everly in that first period when he had a wide open net. But other than that, Cam Talbot, the players in front of him, have really done an excellent job of keeping the place to the outside, blocking shots. Just 10 shots on goal for Edmonton. Well, he made one real good save on Boyd Gordon uh, yeah. earlier in this period. Yeah. I want to give him a little credit, well, Joe. It's not that I'm not <laughs> taking credit away from him, but he's. Uh, I You're right. He, I just think his team, that, you know, after what Elaine Vigno said after the game against Calgary, uh, and they went over with the team, and let's let's get back to playing, you know, good tight defensive hockey, and because they prove it to themselves, they play that way, they can still create plenty of scoring yeah. chances, and so they're back doing that in this game. Royal Dorset and. Moore on. Moore against Ryan Smith. I think Gazdick still wants a piece of Dorset. Mm. Boyle. Played back by Larson to the defense. Wrenchen took a hit. Dominic Moore takes over. Rafael Diaz with a pass ahead of Boyle. Diaz has fit in nicely. John Moore is getting close to being 100% ready to return. So it'll be an interesting decision for head coach Elaine Vigneault. He hasn't hurt him. He really hasn't. Oh, especially with the puck. Played toward the net, but missed by Gastic. Then he got knocked down by Diaz. And he battles there with Dorset as well. I think there are a couple of players. The Rangers are going to be shorthanded yeah. because of it. Penalty upcoming. Long shot wide by Schultz. The touch up made the power play for the Edmonton Oilers. Was 6:46 to go here in the second. Uh, Diaz was there, and I think he's going to be the one they get. But and then there's Gazdick, and again Dorset having some words. But but I almost thought that it was accidental by Diaz. You'll see him get. See, I thought Dorset actually knocked the legs out from under Gazdick from the other side, and he was a little off balance when the contact was made with Diaz. Here it is again. Yeah, maybe not. Dorsett was there, but looked like on that replay, at least, that most of the contact was from Diaz, so that's the right call. So here's an opening for the Edmonton Oilers as, as they try to come back in the game. Step on against Ryan Smith. Step on to Nash on. Shot by Hall, deflected high off the glass. Now Ryan Smith will be directly in front of... Step on with a takeaway. Two on one with Nash. Nash shoots. He scores! Rick Nash with a shorthanded goal, and the Rangers lead four to nothing. Well, they win the faceoff, and Hall is playing the right point. When he gets the puck, he shoots it well wide of the net, and the Rangers take advantage of that. That's the 12th shorthanded goal. So here it comes again. The smart little move on the boards by Stepan, and then he finds Nash. So the, the missed shot, the good play by Stepan to get some space and the pass to Nash who finishes it off with a wrist shot. Well, the Rangers come up with a shorthanded goal, which has suddenly become a factor in their game. In recent weeks, with the penalty killing being very strong over the last 15 games, including this one. Giving up only, giving up only three shorthanded, or rather three power play goals, and scoring their fourth shorthanded goal here. That shot by Larson, a save made by Talbot. Nash is second of the game, 25th of the season from Stepan at 13:26. Boyle and Haglund on for the Rangers. Shot got through, saved Talbot. Played around by Hendricks. Everly gets it back to Larson. Larson shot knocked down, deflected into the corner. Here's Philip Larson. Jordan Everly saved by Talbot. Rangers have Girardi and Stahl on defense. Petrie with a drive. That got knocked down. 
and Boyle clears it all the way down 30 seconds to go in the Edmonton power play. So Rick Nash has come up with two goals in the game. 25 on the season now. Yeah, so you get Nash that scores a little bit and you've got Zuccarello to head mm. scored quite a while it gets one. Moran back to Marincin. Winds up, big drive, missed the net. Anybody else you can think of that needs one, Sam? <laughs> yeah, at number 26. Ah. He's on the ice for the Rangers. San Luis guy. Shot by Hall, Pat, saved by Talbot. Team's back at full strength. Diaz on the ice. Marty San Luis. Now more. Pass was blocked by Petrie. Rangers take it back. Good play, Marty St. Louis. Boy, he's made some real good defensive plays with the stick, and then this will be an icing. 4.23 to go in the second period. Tomorrow night, Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks take on the Jazz. Live coverage gets underway with Visa. Knicks game night at 8.30, and then it's the Knicks and the Utah Jazz tomorrow on MSG. Tune into that. Diaz with a shot, got through a save made by Scrivens. Zuccarello winds it around to Broussard. Check there by Marincin. Ooh, could have been a cross check there. Nothing called on the play. Edmonton moves down. Taylor Hall with a puck. Down low in the shot by Gagne. A save made by Talbot. Kevin Klein with a takeaway. Knocked down. Hendricks, Rangers able to get it out of the zone. Gagne plays it high off the glass. Diaz takes over. Outlet to Zuccarello. Eric Broussard. That deflects up and into the netting. 3.34 to go in the second period. Rangers with three goals here in the second. Two by Rick Nash. This one shorthanded. Tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Frost Brood, Coors Light. Rangers have been a good road team this season. See that 23 wins, franchise records 24. They've done it three times prior. And if they can hold on to this lead, they will tie the franchise record and tie the league lead, St. Louis Blues, for the most road wins this season. Now it says something about the team. You know, they're not regarded as a team that's got you know, an overabundance of grit and physical play and that type of thing and most road teams good road teams have that but it tells you something about their ability to just stay with it set up for Nash just missed on a setup from Stepan Stepan with two assists in the game his play in recent weeks has been solid Derek Stepan 17 points over the last 17 games five goals 12 assists I just think Sam when the you know when the pressure was on to get on a run and the team needed to start playing well for, for a playoff run here to get in is when Derek Stepan started playing his best hockey of the season. That puck deflects into the Edmonton bench. 2.56 to go here in the second period. Rangers with a 4-0 lead. Rick Nash with a couple of goals. Yeah, that line's been good. I mean, Dan Carcillo got, gets put up in that line. He's not known to be a, a, a forward that you would consider a top six forward, but he can skate. He's got that edge to him, and as he, it was interesting to listen to him with John Gino, and he said, he's going to grind it out here on this line, too. <laughs> do what I do. Yeah, he's, done it, he's done it well in this game. He's helped create some, some room and some space yeah. for his two line mates who've uh, been on the scoreboard. Icing whistled against the Rangers. Carl Haglund. With Richards and Marty San Luis. Line has not produced anything point wise on the score sheet, but they have played well together and created several chances. Chipped out by San Luis. But right there by Marincin, Martin Marincin around to Jeff Petrie. Tipped ahead by Everly. Girardi and Everly back for it. Everly knocked away by Girardi. Everly again. Hit by Haglund on Nugent Hopkins. Shot by Everly. Blocked by San Luis. Oh, he'd made, I'm telling you, he's made some plays with a stick. And that, just being in the position to block it. Here's his chance and a save off the right pad of Scrivens. Richards with a nifty little pass for Marty San Luis. 
Taylor Hall the other way. Kevin Klein is there and takes it away. Good defensive play by Kevin Klein. McDonough now Puglia. Brad Richards sends it in. Minute 45 to go in the second. Anton Bello for Edmonton. Gagne's pass across missed by Hendricks. Here's Broussard back in with Zuccarello. Zuccarello turns. Belloff checked in. Broussard's got it. Comes out and shoots blocked by Fraser. Out of the zone it goes. Rangers have done an excellent job taking the crowd out of the game, grabbing the lead, adding to it, and keeping control of the game. Ryan Smith. Ballman stayed with him. Zuccarello takes over. Edmonton just hasn't had a series of sustained shifts where they've been able to get scoring chances. One every now and then, and not many through two periods of this one. And even given that chance on the power play, the Rangers made the most of it with a shorthanded goal. Up bomb ahead for Smith. That was broken up by Stahl. Left bomb scored as we talked about his first NHL goal last game. His father was watching live in Sweden on his birthday. Dominic Gore tries to the net. Scrivens makes a save. And that was a proud moment, no doubt. Tom Lander. Ryan Smith checked there by Stahl. Shot by Petrie, blocked by Dorset. Petrie again. Saved by Talbot. Ten seconds to go in the second period. Stahl trying to protect the puck. And Dorset works it out of the zone. And that'll do it for the second period. A little pushing and shoving. Dorset involved. And with Jordan Everly, and things settle down. But a big second period for the Rangers. They score three goals. Rick Nash gets two of them. One a shorthanded goal. And they have scored four on Ben Scribbins more than they had scored in the previous matchups with him. Sam, I think about halfway through that first period is when the Rangers start taking control of the game. They did get one in the second half of the first period, and then they came out and just continued to dominate play throughout all three zones. It was uh, the Rangers throughout this game. Rangers heading off with a 4-0 lead. Upcoming, it's the New York Lottery Intermission Report. John Giannone rejoins us, his special guest, the two goal scorer, Rick Nash. Back in the studios in New York, Bill Pito will have the Audi MSG 150, and Ron Duguay in the Visa MSG studios with highlights and analysis of the first two periods. Rangers around the net, finding ways to score. Broussard got one in, off an Edmonton Oiler. Rick Nash with a couple in the second period. Four nothing, Rangers, end of two. There's my dinner. Welcome back to Edmonton. New York Rangers hockey is brought to you by Chase. Sam Rose and Joe McCulletti, John Gino with you. Time for our Cadillac trivia quiz. That man, Ryan Smith, has 126 career power play goals with the Oilers. Who is he tied with for the franchise record? See, I know you cheated on this. I'm, I'm still going to say Mark Messier. You got a different <laughs> answer than me. It's got to be someone who's tied to the Rangers. Right. Glenn Anderson. Oh, is Mark Messier not tied to the Rangers? He very much so. <laughs> <laughs> That's too obvious. <laughs> Glenn Anderson. Five-time Stanley Cup champion winner with the Oilers, one time with the New York Rangers. Ryan Smith, he's had himself quite a career. He has, and he hasn't spent his entire career with the Edmonton Oilers. Remember, he left for a while, ended mm -hmm. up with the Islanders in a trade, then he signed as a free agent, spent some time in Denver, and then right. LA, LA, right? Yep. Before, I believe, LA was the last team he was with before returning to the Edmonton Oilers, where he is a center iceman lately. Something he hasn't done much of in his career, mostly wink, but fourth line center on this team. Trying to help provide some veteran leadership to a very young team. Underway third period. Stephon Nash and Carcillo with Girardi and McDonough for the Rangers. Cam Talbot made 15 saves through two periods. Jordan Everly, now Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Boy, what a, what a job. They've done on that top line. 
And they are a skilled line, but Girardi, McDonough, there's another play. McDonough takes Nugent Hopkins out of the play so the Rangers can get the puck. Nash tied up with Everly. Nugent Hopkins is there. Girardi tried to move, and Nugent Hopkins comes out with it. Pass across, broken up by Carcillo, who brings it out. Nash trying to get loose going down the middle. Three on two. Pass tipped away. Defensive work by Kluffbaum. Oscar Kluffbaum, the rookie defenseman in his 10th NHL game, made that defensive play. Jeff Petrie for the Oilers. Now David Perron. Good pass through to Petrie. Perron. Check there by Strawman. And again, good play by Strawman by going right to Perron and not giving him any chance at, ooh, close to being an offside. Perron weaves his way in, saved by Talbot. That's what he can do when he's got some time and space. Uh, he's a tough offensive player. He's got great hands. On the board, St. Louis got it through Brad Richards. Haglund to his left. Fired wide of the net off the glass. Haglund after it. He jumped to the boards by Petrie. And here is Matt Hendricks. Hook checked away. Put back in. Sam Gagne gets tripped up by Rafael Diaz. Power play for the Edmonton Oilers. And before we check out the penalty, we check in with John Ginone behind goaltender Cam Talbot, who gives us the coach's view of things. John. Yes, and it's associate coach Scott Arneal. And when I asked him what he liked so much about the first 40 minutes, he said, we've done a really good job making them play in their own end. That's taken away their transition game. And when I asked him what that tells him about his team, that his defense has been so much better than only two nights ago, he said, look, these guys are professionals. They know they didn't put their best foot forward in Calgary. We've been real good as five, real good through the middle of the ice, making them play mostly on the outside. He said, the guys have been there in layers to back each other up, and that's made it a really good team game so far. Thanks, John. Oilers' third power play of the game. They're 0 for 2. Rangers have scored a shorthanded goal by Rick Nash. Nash looks like he's tripped up by Taylor Hall. Nash and Moore with McDonough and Girardi to start the penalty kill. Moved across to Jordan Everly. Hard around the boards for Taylor Hall. Now Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Smith is set up in front. Everly back to Gagne. Pass across. Nugent Hopkins blocked by McDonough. Unable to clear. That's Justin Schultz playing the right point. Number 19. Everly back to Schultz. Takes the shot. Save. Talbot with Smith screening in front. Good save by Cam Talbot. Quietly having a nice game. That's blocked in front by Girardi. Here's Everly, and a save by Talbot, and he's got the puck. Cam Talbot, very calm. Yeah, he place. sure is. Confident in his abilities. Again, he hasn't played much as of late. There's one shot that, a real good job by Girardi to block it, and then Girardi tries to stay with Everly, and he forces Everly to one side, but Talbot just kept following him, stayed with him the entire way by the time Everly they go the wrist shot. Talbot continued to be in good position to make the save. One back by Gagne. That shot is a save by Talbot. Taylor Hall taking the shot. Boyle and Haglin on with Stall and Strawman for the Rangers. Gagne with a shot tipped wide. In deep Perron behind the net. Double team. Trying to move it. Good takeaway by Strawman. Sent back to the point. Fired in for Perron. Couldn't handle the pass and it's blocked by Stall. Haglund has got a piece of Perron. Strowman checks Taylor Hall. That pass tip comes out of the zone. Now that's the way it's been throughout this game. The Rangers defense in particular going right to those top end players right away to just take their time away and force them in, force them to have to get rid of the puck before they want to. Hall moves in, ran into Derek Stepan. Good play. Stepan standing up at the blue line. Did not give an inch. Interception by Stahl. Ten seconds to go in the power play. Set up to Zuccarello, trying to get it back to Stepan. Unselfish play. Here's Stepan to Zuccarello. He scores! Another shorthanded goal! And it's 5 nothing Rangers. Matt Zuccarello with his second of the game. 
He didn't want to shoot the first time. He wanted to pass it and give Stepan a shorthanded chance to score. But then they get it back again. So the Rangers break it up in the neutral zone. Here's the first two on one. Is he going to shoot it? No, 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 not going to shoot it. Set it up. The Rangers stay with it. Now look at the Oilers. But they have four Oilers there. Stepan gets it. Nobody comes in. Look where they are. They all skate past him. And then Hall's a forward. He's trying to play defense. So Zuccarello's wide open. Beautiful pass from Stepan. And Zuccarello that time, they have a little laugh. They have a little laugh on the bench. Zuccarello's I'm trying to set you up for a goal. <laughs> Edmonton Oilers have given up 13 shorthanded goals this season, the most in the NHL, two in this game. Well, you can see right there the way they played that one. I mean, that was a two against four, and the Rangers did whatever they wanted to do. And Derek Stepan, with three assists on each of the last three goals, Leads the team with 38 assists. Career high in points, I think, right? Yes, yes sir. Puck taken by Anton Lander. 425 gone by here in the third period. And the Rangers now have a 5 0 lead. Marincin shot. Talbot gets a piece of that. Zuccarello with his second of the game, 17th of the season from Stepan and Stahl at 349. Petrie blocked by Marty San Luis. All right. Here's what my plan is, Joe. Now that it's 5-0, right. Marty San Luis has to play the rest of the game. He can't come off the ice until he scores a goal. Yeah, he wasn't listening to you because he just came off the oh. ice. He's got to go back on. Coach must send him right back on. Hey, listen, he's had a really good game. He has. Man, You're right. Really good game. All the plays he's made, he's had some scoring chances. Willie up with a drive wide. He's obviously a little snake bit, or a lot, for that matter. But he's done he's done so many good things in, in this game in particular. The defensive plays he's made, yeah. the block shots, the penalty killing. You know, he's had scoring chances, as we mentioned, but got to find one to get one in the net. And you think about it, the team's record with since the trade and since he was acquired 8-4-1 right. coming into play tonight. If the Rangers hold on to win this game, 9-4-1, that's a pretty good record. Darn right, it's good. Penalty called. On the Edmonton Oilers, Rangers get their second power play of the game. Delay of the game? Yes. And you see what Joe mentioned earlier, career high in points for Derek Stepan, 53, with three assists in the game tonight. And there is Sam Gagne in the penalty box for I'm Edmonton. Sure, I'm not sure he'll be in Edmonton Oilers next year. Really? I don't think so. He's a talented player. He is, but they've got, you know what, they're small. The small team. They've got they got talent up front, but they cannot they move some they, people. They huh? can't compete, Sam, with yes. L.A. and with San Jose and Anaheim. And Anaheim. You, they cannot yeah. compete. They're too small. Somebody's got to go. I think he's going to be one of those players. Power play for the Rangers. They're third of the game. They're 0 for two. Richards with a shot deflected in the corner. Nash, San Luis, Stepan, Richards. And McDonough for the power play. And you know they want to get the puck to San Luis. Everybody's giving it back to him. A shot by Stepan. The rebound went wide by Nash. Here's Richards to San Luis. And excuse me, the one for two on the power play. That goal by Brassard, which deflected in off the Edmonton Oiler defense. Richards to McDonough. So you didn't need to be make your, your patented call. Send <laughs> away with Nash in front. That's blocked by Fraser. You're going to take it back now. How are you going to erase that one? No, 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 no. That counts. That counts. Marty St. Louis comes back to the bench, shaking his head. There's Richards Carey. 40 seconds to go in the power play. Derek Broussard. On the scoreboard, Washington is at Nashville. That game is 2-2 in the third period. Pouliot sends out Zuccarello. Zuccarello with two goals in the game. Nash with two goals in the game. And Broussard the other one. Broussard with the puck here. Zuccarello to Pouliot and across. Trying to get it to Diaz, who snuck in from the point. Nugent Hopkins breaks loose, moves in with Ryan Smith. Boy, what a nice job. Zuccarello, that was a two-on-one. 
break for Edmonton. Zuccarello came all the way back into the zone to turn into a two on two and no shot on goal. Teams are back at full strength. Rangers one for three on the power play in the game. Pass tipped across and cleared out by Matt Zuccarello. Zuccarello with two goals and an assist in the game. Three point game for him, three point game for Stepan. But Perron sends it deep. A little over eight minutes gone by, third period. The Rangers with a 5 0 lead. Boyle tied up his man in the corner. Taylor Hall shoved down by Mark Stahl. Strawman with a hit along the boards. David Perron trying to kick it free. Dorset. They will get it out of the zone. Back from the orders. And Mark Stahl takes it away. Whistle down for a hooking call. The power play coming up to the Edmonton Oilers. 11.29 to go. Matt Zuccarello, big night. He scores a shorthanded goal, his second goal of the game. Earlier in the game, we were talking about the praise for the fourth line, especially for Dominic Moore from the head coach, Elaine Vigno. Yeah, well, there he is, nominated for the Masterton Trophy. And, and what a year it's been for him. Uh, what a couple years it's been for him. Yeah. It, fight through all the tragedy, losing his wife, taking a year off from the game, coming back and trying to, you know, regain himself and find his game and get his life back going again. And uh, that's very, very well deserved, the nomination for the Masterton Trophy. For the player who best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. And he is that fits. the nominee. For the New York Rangers, Josh Harding of the Minnesota Wild was the winner last year. That was voted on by the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Oilers on the power play, 0 for 3 with seven shots in the game. Anton Strawman went for hooking at 8:31. Rangers with Hagelin and Boyle, Girardi and McDonough, the penalty killers. Stepped in by Martin Marincin. Moved by Boyd Gordon. That pass was blocked by McDonough. Marincin keeps it in. Gordon behind the net. Now Hendricks using third line players here on the power play. Why not? As Dallas Aikens. You know what? They've given up two short handed goals. Why not use the players that brought, give you energy and effort every night? Big drive saved by Talbot. The shot by Anton Lander. Gordon. Oh, we got the stick up in the face of McDonough, and a penalty called on the Edmonton Oilers. Rangers have the puck delayed penalty on the Oilers. Haglund's got it. McDonough grabbed his chin as he was hit with a stick. He may have had some blood there. He looks like he's spitting some blood down on the ice. Haglund. Rangers trying to get up ice. Now Dominic Moore. And Moore brings it into the zone. St. Louis, back to Moore. Toward the net, block, Oilers touch up, and the whistle stops play, a high sticking call. That will even things up, and in 16 seconds, Rangers will go on the power play. Boyd Gordon takes the penalty, there's the reach, a good play. And Gordon was just trying to knock the puck out of midair, and the stick goes up into the, underneath the shield, catches, and he's right in the mouth. There is blood. Yeah, and they just they just changed it yeah. from two minutes to four minutes. Uh, the referee came over, saw the that Jim Ramsey, the medical trainer, was uh, trying to stop the bleeding, and four minutes will go up on the board. Team skating four aside for 16 seconds. And then Stallman will return. The Rangers will go on the power play, the one for three. Ryan McDonough pointing out. You're working on the wrong <laughs> side. It's over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't come any better than Jim Ramsey. No. No, they don't. What's he done, four Olympics he, for Canada? He was on the bench for another gold medal yeah. with Team Canada. 9.45 to go here. And the... Third period. Now they're waiting for the the remaining uh, penalty time. So the yeah, Rangers they, needs to go up on the board. Right. 
Want to remind you, Tuesday night, Rangers will be in Vancouver. The homecoming for Elaine Vigneault as he goes against his former team, the Vancouver Canucks. Rangers will see their former coach, John Tortorella. Live coverage gets underway at 9.30 p.m. with Visa Rangers game night. Then it's the Rangers and Vancouver Canucks. Tuesday night, hope you'll join us. Diaz. It's blocked. Boyd Gordon, double minor, high sticking. Ryan Nugent Hopkins with the puck. Strollman is back. And the Rangers run the power play. Their fourth of the game. Diaz and Girardi, Zuccarello, Broussard, and Pouliot on for the power play. Pass too far for Broussard. Zuccarello got a piece of it. And it's cleared out of the zone. Talbot goes out to get it. Rangers with a 5-0 lead. A goal in the first period, three in the second, one here in the third. Two short-handed goals and a power play goal in the game. Diaz. Marincin and Brassard behind the net. Swung around the boards, fired out by Jeff Petrie. Good play by Petrie. A minute gone by in the Rangers' power play. 8.40 to go, third period. I like this move by Elaine Vigno. Dominic Moore out here in the power play. Taken deep by McDonough. Took a hit, stays with a puck. Marty San Luis is on with Richards, Strollman, and Dominic Moore is in the slot. Richards. Back pass out of the zone. McDonough goes to get it. Two and a half minutes to go in the power play. St. Louis has blocked. Tried again. Dominic Moore has it. McDonough holding. And Rangers regroup and head up ice. McDonough leads Marty St. Louis. Pulled down by Ryan Smith. Led ahead by Richards to San Luis. Back to Richards. Now to McDonough to Strollman. And the shot. Save made by Scrivens. Puck taken away by Dominic Moore. Up to Strollman. Here's McDonough. Winds up. Big drive and a save by Scrivens. Richards again. And try to get it ahead for Moore. The clearing attempt knocked down by Strollman. Good play. Richards to Strollman. Now to McDonough. To Richards. Fires across. Try to get it through to San Louis. It's Did intercepted. Ever, there were only six sticks in the passing lane. <laughs> Minute 20 oh, to go on the power play. They're trying so hard You're to right. get him a goal to take some of the tenseness out of his game. Ryan Boyle getting some power play time and the puck taken away by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Moves in. Shoot. Save. Talbot holds it. 108 to go in the Rangers power play. Blue shirts faithful. Visit NewYorkRangers.com for your chance to vote for the Rangers player you feel goes above and beyond the call of duty. It's part of our Stephen McDonald Extra Effort Award presented by Lenox Hill Hospital North Shore LIJ Health System. A very, very important Rangers team award. Face off win, a shot by Lander just wide. One minute to go in the Rangers power play. Diaz with a puck. Nash on. He has two goals in the game. Step on Boyle and Mark Stahl. Scriven stops the puck. Up the boards and it's cleared out all the way down. Step on comes back. And the Rangers head up ice with 35 seconds to go in the power play. The lead for Nash drives to the net. Nash is robbed by Scrivens. Oh, what a save by Ben Scrivens. One hat comes on the ice. Oh, anyway. somebody thought it was in. Somebody thought. <laughs> yeah, what a save. Nash with the speed again. There is Stepan. What a night of passing he has put on. Derek Stepan on the tape with Nash, who's got speed. Goes to the backhand, and Scrivens just fires out that catching glove. What a save. Rick Nash has not had a hat trick as the New York Ranger. He's had five in his career, all with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And that was close. Dan Carcillo was telling when you get in that close, you got to put <laughs> it up a little higher. 
Wait, didn't I say that? I said that first. You, <laughs> you said it first. I'll give you credit for that. But he's a player, you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nash unofficially has had six scoring chances in the game. Dumped in by Dominic Moore, and he chases. Final seconds of the power play. Puck popped in the air, bounces down. Moore up to Girardi. Here is Kevin Klein with a drive to save by Scrivens. Team's back at full strength. This should be an icing. It is. 5.38 to go in the game. Rangers with a 5-0 lead. And basically, you can say they've taken care of business. No, they have. Game. You know, and Rick Nash telling uh, John Giannone in that, in that second intermission about the, the video session they had this morning at uh, Lane Vigneau, went over defensive responsibilities, how they have to play. They showed video from the Calgary game where they made mistakes. And they came out, they all listened, they came out, and they played exactly that way. So strong defensively. Had, they've had the puck most of the game. They didn't give those real good offensive players much time. With this win, the Rangers will go back into sole possession of second place in the Metropolitan Division. Two points ahead of Philadelphia, but the Flyers will have two games in hand. This win will give the Rangers 88 points on the season. With six games remaining. Taylor Hall. Or Neverly gave it up. Broussard's got the puck. Just under five minutes to go. Rangers after this game will have three games remaining on the road. Three at home. The two games on this road trip in Vancouver and Colorado, and home for three against Ottawa, Carolina, and Buffalo, and then on the road. And behind the play, Perron. David Perron and Carcillo. David Daniel Carcillo get into it. Wrestling match. They've had, they've had a little something going on for most of the game. And so they both ended up in the corner. They came together. Carcillo took exception to a hit. And by the time they got to the top of the circles, they got intertwined and they both went down. Players will be heading off. We will head out for a moment. Four and a half minutes to go in the game. Five nothing, Rangers lead. Our game recap is brought to you by Tri Honda dealers. Matt Zuccarello, two goals and an assist. Rick Nash, two goals, his fifth two goal game of the season. Derek Stepan, three assists giving him a career high 53 points. I told you, the, it could be a Badger right now, Joe. I guess you are right. <laughs> you don't have to keep bringing that up, though. Uh, they beat Arizona know, to get overtime, to the final right? four. Yeah. UConn, congratulations, UConn Huskies at the Garden. What were they, a seven, a seven seed? Beat Michigan State by what six to get in? And uh, good win for them. Kentucky with a big win. They beat Michigan. We're all over this NCAA basketball. <laughs> so far, I'm perfect in my pool. Yeah. <laughs> you call Warren couple, Buffett. A couple more. I got a billion Warren coming my way. Not sure I can work the playoffs with you, Sam. <laughs> that shot was tipped away. Teams are skating four aside here. Barcillo and Perron got two minutes each. I thought uh, two minutes each for wrestling, but uh, I think it was roughing was the call. Okay. The official call. 3.40 to go in the game. Marty St. Louis. Here's Richards. That shot went wide and comes out of the zone. Strawman installs St. Louis and Richards on the ice. Nice pass from San Luis to Richards. Goes right back to him. San Luis against Mark Fraser. Richards doesn't know that there's two other teammates on the ice. <laughs> He's he only, only trying to help his he only buddy knows out. That there's one other player out there. <laughs> trying to help him. Philip Larson stopped by Stahl. There's Justin Schultz. And Stahl got a piece of that pass because wide open was Larson. His shot stopped by Talbot. He covers the puck. 2.53 to go in the game. 
Rangers with a 5-0 lead on the Oilers. The turning point of the game is brought to you by Weiser's Whiskey. Welcome to the Weiser Hood. Well, the Rangers led 1-0 at this point. They were on the power play. The puck will come to Broussard. He's going to an attempt to pass, and Marincin, the defenseman, it goes, oh, off the stick. Fools, Ben Scribbins, instead of going over to Zuccarello, it goes in the net. It was almost a power play goal. It was. It was. It they was? counted it. Yeah. They did? They did. It was a power play goal. Yeah. Right there. They did? No. Yeah. Power play goal. And that gave him a career high 18 <laughs> goals on the season. Well, good call then. <laughs> Didn't seem like a power play goal, but it was. And two shorthanded goals for the Rangers in this game. Special teams a big factor. And now with 2.45 to go. Rangers just want to keep the Oilers off the scoreboard. Taylor Hall. Boyle and Moore on with Strawman and Stahl for the Rangers. Ball hit by Strawman. Boyle moves the puck. Strawman looks it out. Marcelo back on the ice as is David Perron. Perron moves in against Stahl. That went off the shoulder of Talbot. And a penalty is called on the play. David Perron right is back in the penalty yeah, box. Boy, he sprinted to the box. Gave himself a whack with a stick on the way there. Now, that's been a frustrating night for him. That's a slashing, slashing call. So David Perron leads this Edmonton Oilers team in goals with 26. They've had the goose egg in this one. It's been a frustrating night. Boy, you have you keep having to go up against Girardi and Stahl and McDonough. And just you know the way they defend. It's uh, not hard to get frustrated if you're a goal scorer. Stahl a little upset. He, he felt that slash by Perron. Rangers power play. They're sixth of the game. One for five. Line to Diaz. Saved by Scriven. And on the ice, Derek Dorsett with Derek Broussard and Rick Nash. Nash with two goals in the game. Broussard fires through. Diaz uh, went off of Scrivens. Broussard to Nash. Pass back is tipped. Dorset got knocked down by Fraser. Ooh, got an extra piece elbow. of him. An elbow right to the yeah. head. Fine to Broussard. Fine. Didn't get much on the pass. And Hendricks takes it away. And clears it down the ice. Time winding down. Minute 25 to go in the game. Rangers with a 5-0 lead. Fine dumps it in. Marcillo gets some power play time. Zuccarello's on the ice looking for a hat trick. And it went high. Good pass from Carcillo from behind the net. It was Frazier and Dorsett. Going at it, and then Dorset left. Frazier is trying to get off the ice, and Carcillo came around the ice, went right over to Frazier. Under a minute to go. Rangers with a 5 0 lead. Pouliot. Zuccarello. Shot by Strollman, a save by Scrivens. Stall. Oilers take it away and clear all the way down. 40 seconds to go. Cam Talbot has made 25 saves in the game. Strawman to Stahl. Past Scrivens. Dorset takes it away. Dominic Moore comes out of the corner. Try to stuff it in. Scrivens denied him. Ten seconds to go in the game. Frazier and Dorset still on the ice against one another. Ryan Nugent Hopkins stick saved by Talbot. And it is... 
A shutout for Cam Talbot, his third of the season, third of his career. He makes 26 saves. The Rangers shut out the Edmonton Oilers five to nothing for their sixth win in the last seven games, giving them 88 points in the standings. Well, they came out of this game and started this game the way they had to. They went after Edmonton. They continued to put the pressure on through that first period. They gave up almost nothing. Edmonton had just seven attempted shots in the first period, of which three were on goal. Like Cam Talbot had to make the saves. Cam Talbot, when he had to make the saves, he did more so in the second and third period than certainly the first. But he played strong. He played well with the team in front of him. It was a defensive gem. Solid game for the New York Rangers. Up and down the lineup. That's a feel-good game for the Rangers. Two shorthanded goals, a power play goal, and a shutout for Cam Talbot. A 5-0 win. We'll be right back.